Yo, what is going on guys? It's Cameron here. Welcome back to the channel. Great to have you here. You know, I don't say it enough, but I'm really proud of my Fortnite community that we built on this channel. You guys are amazing and have shown an overwhelming amount of love on this channel. So just really want to start off this video by saying thank you so much for that. Guys, today we are tackling how to get the lowest input delay possible in Fortnite. I did a bunch of research on this one and came up with all the best settings in game as well as out of game around your Windows 10 that will help reduce your input delay and give you the smoothest, most responsive gameplay experience possible. So there is a bunch of tips we to get through today though if you guys are new to my channel my name's cameron i make guide and how to videos if you guys are looking to get better at fortnite this is the channel for it i highly recommend hitting the subscribe button where i'll be posting tons of content like this every other day and for those of you that don't know if you guys haven't done a whole lot of research on this input delay is the time between actually hitting a physical button and it actually happening and showing on screen in the game this can be the matter of milliseconds, but it is still crucial to have the lowest input delay possible because this means that you're going to have less time between making an action and it appearing and happening. Before we dive into this, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the affiliate on the channel, NoPing. It is a optimizing network software that you guys can get. NoPing is a free trial basis optimizing software for your network which can really lower your ping. We're talking from 70 ping down to 20 ping is what it did for me personally. It might vary for you guys. You guys might only save 10 ping or you might save 100 ping. You really won't know until you actually try out the software. There's a free link down in the description. You get it free for no, no payment required for a full like 10 days. After that point, it is $5.33 on the monthly subscription also guys in par with the video that we're posting today if you click this gear you actually get an option here turbo games this function improves the keyboard response so basically it lowers your input delay which is huh exactly what we're working on in today's video so yeah there's even a little feature here that it can can do that for you so first off with this video i want to go ahead and share all the best fortnite settings after all the research i've done i found this is the best way to reduce your input delay and the good news is all these settings will also increase your fps so first off i recommend going to performance mode because that does tend to have the best um, performance increase um, direct x11 would be the second choice right so DirectX 11, also really good. It doesn't have all those extra ray tracing features like in DirectX 12. So I also recommend that one if you can't use performance mode or just don't like performance mode. But performance mode is the one I'm gonna be showing all the specific settings for. Um, so first off, I wanna share the ones that give you the most input delay. Motion blur and V-Sync. It's a must have to have these two off. They actually do have a performance cost and uh, what you get out of it is just not worth it. Sure, your game might look slightly smoother with motion blur, but it makes the overall performance and therefore quality of your gaming experience worse. So make sure these two are off, you'll, uh, you'll thank me later. If you have a, a higher end CPU, you'll wanna go with high or epic textures. Whoops. Um, higher epic if you have a higher end CPU. If you have a lower end CPU, just keep it on low for textures because it's really gonna make a, make a minimal difference. This is mostly for your CPU because textures are loaded through your, um, your CPU instead of your GPU, which is your graphics card. So if you have a high-end CPU, this evens out your gameplay experience to where it's not just GPU-centered and uses more CPU. So uh, high if you have a, I have a 3700X Ryzen, so I'm gonna keep this on high. For view, you want to have it on near if you want the lowest input delay. Um, you can have it up a bit. It'll just come with a slightly um, higher um, input delay, but I'm going to keep mine on near. 3D resolution only really matters much for uh, FPS. If you lower it down to like the 90% range, you actually get a little bit of an FPS boost, which is kind of nice. So I have mine at 95. Now, um, the most important setting I think in all of these is up here so actually if you want the lowest input delay you're gonna want to go to full screen my full screen is a little bug guys okay <laughs> um, what full screen does is it cuts out all the other tasks on your game or on your CPU or your computer so when you're actually playing Fortnite it's only gonna solely be focusing on Fortnite and it won't run any other background like apps or Windows or anything and therefore it lowers your input delay. So I highly recommend full screen if you're not using that uh, because it will actually give you slightly lower uh, input delay. 
One last setting that's actually really important before we leave the Fortnite settings and go over other settings. Actually, if you go under your settings again, go under the gear icon, which is for your game, you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can actually save about five to 10% in FPS and input delay if you remove um, recording your replays. The reason being is it is actually using resources from your, your PC um, while you're playing Fortnite if you're recording those. So you'll actually have a better improvement in your gaming experience and in your input delay if you just turn them off. It does mean, unfortunately, you can't VOD review this way. So um, yeah, just be aware of that. Definitely worth it and something I wanted to mention. All right, guys, so now we're on the desktop screen, as you can see here. Now, the very utmost important thing that I'd recommend is making sure you don't have anything running in the background that's not supposed to be there. Yeah, I literally only have Bluetooth devices. So you can do that by clicking your uh, your little navigation window here that shows all your icons. And also by closing out any browsers or anything that you don't need while you're playing Fortnite. You can do that just by closing them down here in the dock. Uh, basically, you want as little of things running as possible in order for Fortnite to get the lowest input delay because all those are system resource users and it will actually show up when you're, uh, when you're playing the game. So the next thing that I'd recommend is opening your Epic Games Launcher. And hear me out on this because this is actually super big. I didn't even know about this until very recently. Once you have that open, go down here in the bottom left to settings. And then you'll see this option here where it says minimize to system tray. You actually want to make sure this is unticked. The reason being is whenever you close out an Epic Games Launcher, it'll fully close the Epic Games Launcher program. And actually, when you have Fortnite running, there's no need for the Epic Games Launcher running. It's just using more system resources and it's just making your input delay higher. So by unticking minimize system tray, then whenever you close out of Epic Games, um, it'll fully close out the Epic Games Launcher while you're playing Fortnite. Of course, you'll need to relaunch it whenever you want to open Fortnite. But that's a nice little uh, tip that not a lot of people are aware about. Most people think you need your Epic Games Launcher running in order for Fortnite to, uh, to perform, but you don't. So guys, the very next thing we need to do is disable full screen optimization. Now, a lot of people don't know what this setting is or anything about it, so I'm just going to share this with you real quick. First of all, you need to open your Fortnite game folder. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Just open your file explorer. You're going to select this PC. You're going to select whichever drive has your apps on it. Mine is C drive. Then you're going to go to program files and then you'll select Epic Games, then Fortnite, then Fortnite game, then binaries, Win64. And here, finally, after six directories, you'll find Fortnite client Win64 shipping. So once you found this one here, Fortnite client Win64 shipping, this is the one with the largest storage, by the way, so don't select these other ones that are the smaller size, they don't matter. On Windows 64 shipping, you're gonna right click it, go down here to properties at the bottom, and then you're gonna select compatibility up here in the top uh, middle. And then you'll see a few options here. Now there's two things that we should do here. We should run this program as administrator. This gives most resources to Fortnite. Also, you'll wanna disable full screen optimizations because for some reason, um, if you don't do this, Windows 10 will add VSync and it adds input delay to the app whenever you're running it. So make sure you disable full screen optimizations. Then you're going to want to click here where it says change high DPI settings. And you'll see an option down here where it says override high DPI scaling behavior. This does lower input delay by a bit as well. So you'll check this little uh, check mark here and you can just leave it on application. Once you do all that, just hit OK and then you'll need to hit apply down here in the bottom right. With just making those few changes here, it's gonna give you a higher FPS and also a lower input delay, which is fantastic. 